Okay, this is uh, the machine. This is a diacoptic machine. What we've done is we've separated the coils out. Um, it's an asymmetrical transformer. Uh, now I gave uh, 11 videos, I think in total, I think it was, on this machine. Uh, and how we got to this machine by investigating coils, investigating what the magnetic fields were doing within the core. Um, this machine changed the world. Okay, what you can see right here changed the world. The only people that it didn't change the world for were either for trolls or ignorant people that don't know any better. Okay, if, uh, if people don't know about this machine uh, and didn't make it their job to find out about this machine uh, then you're pretty much sort of being left at the mud at the bottom of the pond and the ponds dried up so you, you're way out of um, you're way off the off the ballpark if you're not understanding knowing heard about this machine we've had many 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 independent replications uh, all of uh, varying uh, levels um, now it takes a little bit to get this machine working okay it's not a simple machine it's not as simple as it might look the interactions of the magnetic fields are what are key here okay this, this is what what we're looking at we're looking at interactions of magnetic fields uh, that um, produce a work excess in the machine that's greater than what we put into the machine. Now once you understand the simple things to this machine, this machine very very quickly it, it is gained an appreciation that you just cannot understand if you don't do the proper research into it. You, you just can't understand its simplicity, its function. Uh, you, you can't understand anything about this machine if, if you don't take the, the surface off and investigate. Okay? Now, I couldn't have shown a more simple machine. This, this is about as simple as it gets. Okay? A few wires, a few coils. Um, it's about as simple as it gets. It can't get any more simple. There's just no way for it to get any more simple. Okay, we've got three coils. We've got, uh, I think it was 26 turns on the input coil, which you can see out the back over here. Uh, we have two coils on the output, which you can see over here, black and red wires. Uh, you can see we've got. Um, small current sensing resistors 1% 0 0.1 ohm that we've got our scope uh, looking at it's an extremely simple machine okay and just like the electric generator it's the change in magnetic field that moves electrons okay it's the opposition of magnetic forces that pump electrons Electrons basically all they do is, is they just ride on the magnetic field. Okay, it's like the electrons are always being shoved downhill because the magnetic field is, is pushing them. It's a pump. Uh, now the 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 simplicity here is just it's it's just it's something to be in awe of. Okay there is there is such a simplicity here there is such a simple basic concept that if people just sat down and studied these very very simple concepts okay there, there's there's asymmetry here there's the number three the 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 magic number number three we've got three coils we've got three reaction sets okay it's about as simple as you could possibly get and yet all these other forums are off chasing rainbows glorified voodoo magic you have gotta be joking don't you you gotta be joking it's about as simple as it gets okay three magnetic fields three coils one input coil your two partnered output coils act as the generator rotor and the generator stator 
coils they each oppose each other there is symmetry between these two coils so between the partner output coils there is symmetry all the forces from each coil are opposed by the partnered output coil okay your input coil is a catalyst your input coil simulates the coil uh, or at least the generator rotation shaft rotation it simulates delta t the change in time which is necessary okay we need a magnetic field that changes in time that's your input coils job your input coils job is to bring partner output coil one and partner output coil two into a magnetic resonance okay a magnetic fight oh, the big arrows they, they show you the big arrows show you each opposition it's about as simple as it gets okay again three coils one partner output coil other one gold one here two partner output coils the green input coil simulates delta t okay in the generator the generator has a stator coil which would symbolize this coil here this partner output coil here and a rotor coil which might symbolize this partner output coil over here okay each coil must oppose okay magnetic fields indicated by the big red arrows the big red shiny red arrows must oppose okay there is opposition here all the time if there's no opposition if there's an addition it doesn't work okay do you study on electromagnetic induction you've got to have opposition um, now opposition can mean either north poles facing or south poles facing but at the end of the day there's an opposition okay there's always there's always a uh, at least most of the time okay we do have an experiment well, experiment where we can prove otherwise but most of the time there will always be uh, the negative sign okay the the opposite sign of the source okay and that's basically your your lens law equation which has been inserted into Faraday's law uh, as the negative sign so remembering that's voltage okay it gives you a negative voltage and then the current is assumed to follow in the same uh, polarity okay so partner and output coils now I just want to make it clear to people because there are so many stupid people out there you know these, these edu educated people that go out and memorize entire collections of textbooks but you know what they couldn't navigate the way out of a paper bag partner output coils is the cheapest simplest easiest path to above unity out there okay a couple of coils a couple of magnetic fields a MOSFET basically that's all you need okay it's it's a Delta T which is the change in time of magnetic fields we've got three magnetic fields in total one magnetic field associated with this coil one magnetic field associated with this partner output, output coil and another magnetic field associated with the green input coil here okay and remember our equation so our green input coil might give us a magnetic field that faces this way okay is opposite to this red arrow here okay Faraday's law of induction this partnered output coil starts generating an EMF a voltage okay the current will oppose so the red arrow faces this way but at the same time this coil okay at the same time this coil has a changing magnetic field this coil over here sees that changing magnetic field as a source and this coil over here then generates its own EMF thus if a load is across the coil the coil will uh, will have a current that flows and this is magnetic resonance so when this coil over here has a current equal in mag magnitude but opposite to this partner output coil over here we have magnetic fields oppose at the same time and the same amplitude and this is your sta stator and rotor equivalent if you like in an electric generator 
there's no difference there's no difference people okay what you see in an electric generator is is an incomplete unfinished unengineered okay it's not fully engineered a, an electric generator which I'll show you a video in a minute an electric generator generator is an unfinished unengineered machine that people don't even really understand okay uh, any charge moving anywhere okay any charge moving constitutes a magnetic field okay it's really 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 simple the copper atom has 29 electrons in a coil there could be several gazillion electrons okay so a, a piece of copper wire that is insulated that's wrapped on a former or a bobbin or whatever you want to call it a piece of wire has enough energy in it literally enough energy in it to run a city for years okay and this is this is where people fall off the rails this is where people completely get unstuck and when you're done this is what you end up with and here it is it's asymmetrical regaging you can see the light on the light comes not only from the input coil but it also comes from each the interactions between each partnered output coils so the current is pumped okay we have an interaction in here which I've marked important in previous shots the interaction in here is a resonant interaction between the two partnered output coils okay and what I mean by that is the magnetic fields get to maximum amplitude for the minimal input force if you like or input current they get to maximum amplitude for a given configuration okay now what I mean by that is that each partnered output coil interacts with each other differently in this region here depending on things like turns things like the coil length things like the core um, they all they all work differently and that's why it's a little bit hard to predict but at the end of the day the same basic processes apply across the board okay so to get th this is your input region okay and here and then this is your work region over here so over here on this slope over here your inputs completely off all right so all of this area under the scope over here all this area under the line that's all work being done in the system when your input is off okay and you'll find if you if you study close enough you'll st st find that the input coil actually sends current back to the source in this area okay so your input coil is on in this small region in here on this big region over here your input coil is off but it actually sends current back to the source so it's a negative power not negative energy negative power okay now there's a lot of confusion out there okay people are totally lost in the winds of bull you know what I mean people just talk absolute total rubbish okay people need to get the facts straight and people need to start actually studying real science and really understanding how things properly work because there's so many people out there that are talking complete and utter rubbish and they don't even know what they're talking about it's negative power not negative energy now negative power means that you can have a, a positive voltage but a negative current you can have it the other way around as well you can have a negative voltage but a positive current and if you do the math on that it means negative power all right so you don't have positive power you have negative power it's different um, now the argon diagram go and study that because it makes it perfectly clear uh, it's basically when you're in generator mode instead of um, motor mode I think that's the two different terms that they use to define the difference so one is being defined as a generator one is being defined as a motor and in the two different modes you end up with um, either positive power or negative power it's very very simple okay th this is just a quick um, 
image just to show what I mean. Uh, go and look it up because uh, th this is quite interesting to have a look at. So you'd have a, a positive voltage but a negative current. Okay, so this is how you define all your reactive, um, non-reactive, all that sort of stuff in your four quadrant um, argon diagram. Okay, so generator mode on this side, generator mode up up the top on this side, motor mode on this side, motor mode on this side. Okay, so remember capacitive, capacitive is the bottom two quadrants, inductive, inductive is the top two quadrants there. If you're on the line, you are neither uh, capacitive or inductive. Okay, or inductive or capacitive. If you're on the line, depends where you have to draw your dots as to your phase and all that sort of thing. Okay, uh, go and study it. It's worth studying because th this is something that everybody in this field should at least know the basics about. Okay, it's not hard. It's quite simple, um, but worth knowing about. Okay, again, this is asymmetrical regaging. If it was symmetrical regaging we would have as much regauge period here as we would have a work period over there. To make it asymmetrical we need to make sure that our regauge period is much narrower than our work region and obviously the narrower our regauge area is and the more our work region is the more output that we get um, as a total result. Um, now in the regauge area this is where your machine, where your input does very little work um, because your, your machine, it's, it's, a, it's an open system, a system that is, it's not a closed system in the normal meaning of the word because we have more than one source of energy. Okay, now uh, any time that there's a change in magnetic field uh, there's always an action and a reaction. Okay, everybody, everybody is familiar with Newtonian, Newtonian physics. Okay, so for every uh, action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Well, that's only half the story. That's only half the story because every time you have a reaction, you can take advantage of that reaction in most situations to actually do more work again. So it doesn't include uh, what has been taught in, in some circles for a long time is asymmetrical Newtonian physics. Asymmetrical Newtonian physics has been uh, hidden from the public for a long, long, long time. Uh, Newton himself actually theorized and did bring laws into effect that were actually hidden from everybody because um, he knew about asymmetrical reactions. Okay. So again, if we were to look at an asymmetrical reaction, it, it's very, very simple. Okay, so asymmetrical reaction. We have an input coil. That's one action. Uh, we apply a voltage across the terminals. A current flows, creates a magnetic field, uh, changing in time. The closest coupled coil will see this uh, action and then create a reaction. Okay, um, output coil creates a voltage, we have a load across the terminals on the coil, a current will flow, we have an opposite reaction. Okay, this reaction can have a counter reaction. Over here we have our third coil, asymmetry. Okay, third coil which then sees the partnered output coil as its source and then, because of the changing magnetic field in this coil over here, then produces a voltage on this coil, and if this coil is loaded, this coil can carry a current, which this coil will then oppose this coil. Okay, So we have three sets, three action sets. So one, two, okay, two, three, and then the third action set over here is that this particular coil over here has a magnetic field direction that actually assists your input coil. So your input coil would have a magnetic field that opposes this red arrow here. So if we were to pick this red arrow up over here, this one here, pick it up, move it over here, and point it this way over here, same way as it's pointing already, then this would be the magnetic field direction, the magnetic field vector direction of the input coil. So this coil over here assists and for every 
uh, amp per turn or for every amp per square meter that this coil over here adds to the system because this coil over here is a source of energy as long as it's in the proximity of a magnetic field changing in time um, then this coil over here will then assist your input coil bringing your input coil current down okay it pushes the impedance up so the so the uh, input current to this coil goes down so you can have a coil with 20 turns on it of you know, maybe I don't know, 20 gauge wire or something like that um, and you can have a very 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 little current um, and if you were to look at the cycle on the um, on the coil here you would see that a certain amount of current is being sent back to the source and sometimes it can be surprising you can have a lot of current sent back to the source in some situations all of that information has been shared on my website uh, this is not new information I'm just going over top of same stuff again um, it, it's so obvious and it's so easy to prove on the bench it's just not funny but yet most of these so-called geniuses out there most of these so-called professionals out there that know what they're doing can't even put five cents worth of investigation together it's so sad so really sad it's unbelievable uh, anyway so that's probably enough on this topic okay um, this has been shown time and time and time and time and time and time again and we've had so many replications on this that people are just getting bored with it now we've had this technology for so long and some of the members um, at aboveunity.com uh, we sort of just get bored with it now to be honest it's really nothing new to us anymore um, it, it's something that after a while you sort of grow a bit wary of the new toy and sort of think oh the new toy's not you know not that flash now you know we move on and have a look at other things as well but at the end of the day this is the simplest the easiest the most logical inception of free energy machines there is to know um, now the answer is staring people right in the face yet so many people are off chasing voodoo black, black magic science it's just just a joke it really is just a joke you know you keep hearing of all this talk of cold energy this and radiant that and hey well did you know <laughs> did you know Nikola Tesla would be laughing at these people he really would um, anyway I think at this stage I think we, we need to make it even more obvious to some people about some of the simple facts uh, some of the really 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 simple facts that um, people need to learn a bit more about what we're going to do is we're going to pick up our equipment we're going to take it out into the bush so that it doesn't um, something nice to look at in the background I guess um, and we're going to do a little bit of a test we're going to do a little bit of a test just to sort of show people what the basic things are that they're missing okay you can see a 6.6 .6 kilowatt petrol power generator here um, there's two outlets two AC outlets with a circuit breaker you can see a two kilowatt water heater or a jug uh, for boiling water so what we're going to do is we're going to show a very very simple test that any and every researcher out there should already know um, that the shaft torque on a generator is entirely a magnetic effect only okay current flows in the wire creates a magnetic field as soon as there is a magnetic field the shaft uh, sees a drag now the drag is its opposition it's a bucking okay uh, if it wasn't a bucking it would assist and the rotor would speed up the sign is a negative sign uh, which basically is the same as 180 degrees out of phase so for every opposition of magnetic field there is a shaft torque on the rotor that's exerted which depends entirely uh, which is entirely um, a function 
of the magnetic field itself and therefore the current that is drawn from the uh, output coils. So I'm going to show you, we're going to start the generator up, we're going to switch the jug on, um, I'm going to show you the difference between a loaded generator and an unloaded generator, um, which should be extremely obvious to any normal uh, thinking researcher out there, um, but it doesn't appear to be across most forums out there. So we seem to see most people out there that are off chasing voodoo science, voodoo magic, um, you know, radiant this, cold that, you know, all that sort of hoo-ha, and these people that carry on with all the nonsense and rubbish don't even seem to know the basics about electromagnetic induction. So let's get started. Okay, so at the moment there is no load on the generator. The generator is um, it's just spinning freely. We can see down here we've got the circuit breaker off. jug is boiled. We saw the circuit breaker switch switched on and off several times and we heard a very very specific difference in tone as in the form of uh, load on the engine, load on the petrol engine, turning the shaft of the generator. Okay so when current was flowing, when the switch was on, we saw very plainly, very simply, the generator shaft had more torque on it, uh, which was very, very obvious by the sound. Okay, now there's nothing hard about this. There's nothing difficult. Okay, every single, every single generator, every single power plant, every single light, it all it all works on the same basic concepts. There is no magic to this. Okay, it's basically just your concept of a whole bunch of marbles uh, flowing, if you like, or being pushed or pumped down a pipe. Okay, the number of marble, marbles is your um, voltage, okay, and the flow at, at which the marbles uh, flow, or the rate of flow, is your current. Okay, X amount of marbles per second is current 
and number of marbles is voltage. There is nothing difficult to this and to be perfectly honest all I see all day every single day of the week is people making it way more difficult than what it needs to be. Voltage is current, uh, sorry, voltage is generated and current is supported. Okay, you can hear when the gen when the generator slows down, there is an opposition of magnetic fields. You can hear hear it in the form of torque on the shaft, which slows the generator down, puts the generator under load. Very 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 simple stuff. Okay, nothing hard to it. The generator is incomplete, it's a symmetrical device and therefore because it's symmetrical the force that you put in is the force that you get out minus losses. It's not hard people, okay? All we've done is we've taken what you can see right in front of you to the next level, okay? We have an asymmetrical generator. The forces that we put in have got nothing to do with the forces that we get out. The forces that we put in, it's just a delta T. Okay, it's an excitation. Delta T being the time rate of change. Okay, the torque that we see in the generator is the force between partnered output coil 1 and partnered output coil 2. Our partnered output coils exhibit all the force between those two coils and our input coil sees almost no force. In fact, the more current that we draw, the more force that the input coil doesn't see. So you sort of have to have a certain amount of force in the system before your system starts working properly. So this is the circuit that I gave um, everybody out there for the um, asymmetrical transformer um, L1 being our input coil which is the green coil on the um, partnered output coil image L2 being one of the gold coils L3 being the other one of the gold coils now when I gave the um, demonstration of this machine I only showed scope shots of this particular coil uh, and a little bit of scope shots on this particular coil okay and the measurement that we took across this 0.1 ohm resistor here um, showed a um, sawtooth waveform as did this one but this one wasn't quite so prominent this this one although it was there and visible uh, there was more uh, of a flat line rather than a sort of a sawtooth current um, because of the way they had the scope set up as, as well as other things. Um, now I just want to tell everybody at this stage because this is really important all the measurements that have been taken so far that show um, above the unity boundary so anything COP greater than one um, only took the output measurements on this particular coil the coil that we loaded, the coil that we had a load on um, versus the input coil L1 and didn't show a single measurement on L3 and what people don't realize is that L3 also has a voltage and also has a current as well um, so those measurements weren't taken on that particular coil uh, so measurements that were taken by different people um, were actually well 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 below um, what was actually there and being used now if we flick back to this image for a minute you can see um, so in the in the circuit green coil here L1 this gold coil here L2 this gold coil here L3 okay so let's flip back to that again for a second okay so green coil gold coil gold coil um, now I just want to point out this is the simplest inception of this machine okay this is just the start this is just the start of what is possible um, I want to make it pretty clear at this stage that this is the path that Floyd Sweet was on 
okay all of these ideas that um, that I've managed to verify and test on the bench all come from Floyd Sweet and many of Floyd Sweet's ideas were incorporated by other machines as well um, Paul Raymond Jensen was one that basically had the, the exact same ideas um, and applied them the same way the, this has been around for years it's just that everybody's been trying to hide it um, most people out there couldn't understand it even if their hands were tied behind their back and left in front of several images all their lifetime they still couldn't understand it uh, and still can't today yet the fact of the matter is it's one of the most simple machines out there three coils one input coil two output coils uh, the symmetry happens between L2 and L3. These two coils here have a symmetrical force or need to have a symmetrical force between each coil. When the symmetry between these two coils is occurring in the same way, in the same way as a conventional transformer, then L1 will almost see no negative net force. Okay? All your negative net force is between these two coils okay it's very very basic very straightforward um, a voltage is generated a current is supported okay we just saw that in the video okay you have to support shaft torque to make the current flow okay you have to add energy to a system if it's a symmetrical system um, to, to you know to, to keep the current flowing Okay, as soon as you switch the input off, that's when your output current instantly switches off as well. So switch the machine off, the machine is off. Okay, um, keep magnetic fields high in there and moving and changing in time. Okay, and that's when your, your machine can do extra work. Okay, people need to stop and they need to think. Okay, it's magnetic fields doing work here. Okay there is inertia to the magnetic field okay anytime there's a change in magnetic magnetic field there's an electric field associated automatically whether you like it or not okay a changing magnetic field is an electric field so there's a lot more to this um, but at the end of the day three coils three changing magnetic fields um, obviously the, the coils the configuration of the coils can be optimized um, I've been going through some math now for quite some time for several several years many more than two maybe five or six uh, and I, I think I've got a basic idea down but I still can't say right if you follow this rule that rule and that rule the machines gonna work okay there's too many variables in it and unfortunately it does just require a little bit of common sense a little bit of sitting down and a little bit of figuring out what's going on okay so it's it, it's something that people need to start using their brains and start thinking about um, if people want a small box that they can plug into the house and power the house this machine can do it okay how many other machines out there have have people had the opportunity to have build experiment with you know I mean we've all seen small boxes in the past that can do these sorts of things but no one's ever released it well people here it is right in front of your eyes here it is okay changing magnetic fields in time electrodynamics is incomplete because it lacks asymmetry well here it is here's the answer right in front of your face here's asymmetry it works right in front of your face we've seen it okay asymmetrical regaging there it is right there okay we have a regauge period okay this is when your input coil tells your two output coils okay guys come on we need to get right up to peak amplitude again and then the input coil turns off okay and then there's work done all this time over here all right this is the work area same as what I've shown you here okay so input coil on and this small rectangle here okay that's where the input coils on 
okay you can see it here as well and put coilers on in here okay all this time over here is input coil off and partnered output coils doing all that work okay get your amplitude up and what will happen is you have more energy in the in the slope there okay I'll show you what I mean okay so here it is here so the higher our voltage amplitude through time the more current that can be pumped by your output coils your partner output coils okay so by getting our amplitude up and you also see this in Ohm's law but by getting our voltage amplitude up uh, which can be done various different ways um, obviously again I, I just want to say voltage is generated how do you generate voltage it's the time rate of change of the magnetic field with a certain value okay magnetic field has to have a certain value has to change in a certain amount of time and the amount of turns okay so turns the magnetic field value and the time that it changes in okay will give you a voltage voltage is generated now all this inside the all the red here is power okay so voltage and then current has a linear decrease over time so all the red in the middle here is output power okay and you saw that we had very little input power because our regauge period is short so a regauge all it does is it tells our partner and output coil 1 and partner and output coil 2 to have a specific delta t okay the delta t is the time rate of change which is magnetic resonance okay so our input coil has importance our input coil is the time that it takes for the magnetic fields to interact together and that can be done at that there's there's very very little work done here because it's all done at resonance okay so the magnetic field from partnered output coil 1 and partnered output coil 2 are in a resonance situation so that basically means that there is no uh, impedance in the coils okay the impedance moves to zero the um, this is the whole circuit too by the way because you've got to remember everything in the circuit is part of the coils okay so we have a we can get a very very high amplitude gain in here and get lots of work done on the output for a very very little force on the input our input time that's the regauge time okay our input time that's when our coils have to get back up to maximum amplitude again and at the same time that the coils are doing that we have an output period during that time as well okay now it is possible to implement some sort of switching or something like that so that you're actually not drawing any current or anything during this process but you've got to remember that you actually need current flowing for this to work in the first place so by implementing a system like that it could be detrimental to your system in the long run because you need current flowing in your coils for this interaction to take place in the first place anyway so I am going to uh, soon I'm going to show people out there the next step okay now this this is the most simple implementation to this technology but it's it's only the start okay there's there's much more to this technology than just this okay this is the simplest inception of this machine okay it's the most simplest form that people can use to understand how free energy machines work okay again uh, you know if people sit down and actually study what is current okay it's 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons past point p in one second okay 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons is also one coulomb okay so the difference between a coulomb and current is the rate of flow of that current okay so one second so a coulomb per second is the same as current and that's why 
capacitors have coulombs is because we can actually say right there's one coulomb in there which is the same as one ampere if we can get that coulomb out of there in one second all right so basically current is the flow of coulombs if you like or the time rate of change of coulombs um, what is voltage well voltage is the difference in potential okay so we have two terminals we have one terminal at a difference of potential to the other okay so we have basically we have much more charge remember electrons a negative charge remember the cop copper atom has 29 electrons per atom okay and it had 100 billion atoms per per coil okay then you can imagine how much amperes could be available in that coil if we were to get that coil under the right conditions okay um, now under extreme magnetic forces we could probably pull all, all the electrons away strip all the electrons away from all those atoms in, in several seconds if the magnetic fields were strong enough okay um, Floyd Sweet said the same thing uh, and, and again this is important people need to go back to basics okay if you want a small box to power your machine, to power your device, to power your home, to power your car or whatever, you've got to get back to basics. Okay, what is voltage? How do you get voltage? What is current? What do you need to support current? Why do you need to support current? Well, you need to support current because if current's not supported, the machine's off. Okay, we saw it by the torque on the rotor in the last demonstration. Okay, if the shaft torque on the rotor was sufficient sufficiently strong then we could stall the, the petrol engine on the generator and that would effectively switch the machine off stall the engine there's nothing turning the shaft basically there's there's no output on the output terminals okay um, pretty straightforward it's just a little bit of common sense there's nothing hard to this okay those geniuses out there that have spent 50 years memorizing textbooks and all that sort of thing well Guess what? I'm here to tell you they can't navigate their way out of a paper bag for the very, very simple reason is if they can't work this out, they can't work anything out. Okay, this is about as simple as it gets, the simplest inception of a machine. Okay, this is the simplest inception of this machine, of this technology. It can't get any more simple. Three coils, three magnetic fields. Okay, two magnetic fields that are symmetrically opposing okay symmetrical in amplitude in, in force in symmetrical in position okay it's symmetrical full stop okay your partnered output coils are a generator's rotor and stator coil okay or rotor magnet and stator coil okay the force is equal and opposite we saw that we heard that in the generator okay for every foot pound or or kilogram per, per square centimeter or whatever it be of torque on the shaft okay that torque is opposed by the magnetic fields it comes back out at the engine okay and that's where the shaft torque comes from very very simple okay I think this video is long enough we are going to go into more like I said um, later on okay I just wanted to cover this and I wanted to make sure that people know that this machine has been out there for a long time and silly people out there haven't investigated it proper properly enough then that's their bad luck and their fault and everything else this has been around for a long time it's about as simple as it can get okay it's so easy to make this work it is so easy to make this work yet people are still searching you got to ask the question why are they still search searching who they're being paid by yeah yeah there's so many trolls out there it's just not funny it's just a joke and you'd be surprised a, a little story for people um years ago i knew a person that used to work on the inside i'm not going to say their name and i never will i was asked to be quiet and I will anyway this person verified for me several names um, of people that were out there trying to keep this technology quiet under wraps um, hide it at all cost um, and you'd be surprised who some of those names are 
names I'm not going to name just at this stage but names I've put aside um, for a rainy day should we say so people need to seriously wake their ideas up what I'm showing you right now is about as simple as it gets okay this is as simple as it gets it doesn't get any more simple okay it really doesn't okay it's as cheap as anything I mean you could do this you could put this whole thing together if you had a few parts floating around already you can put this whole thing together and start experimenting for twenty twenty dollars or so within, within an hour within an hour you could put something together um, it's so cheap and so easy it's just not funny okay and people are not paying enough attention people really need to start paying attention and like I said this is just a start okay what people need to start thinking about is these coils here have a magnetic field and I've said all along it's the magnetic field that does this changing in time well what can you do to increase the magnetic field well first thing you do is shorten these coils up okay make them half the length or something like that um, you can double the turns double the current okay and I as the um, ampere turns which is the same as magna magnamotive force okay coils will, will respond quicker if they are shorter okay because the magnetic field will be stronger the magnetic field will be faster and changing in time all that sort of thing so people need to start thinking about this okay what makes the magnetic field stronger how do we get our currents up how do we get our voltage up okay why do we need to get our voltage up well hey ohm's law uh, ohm's law current i equals v over r so get our voltage up with the same resistance because the resistance won't change if we get our voltage up and our current also goes up so the power product goes up as a result just by putting our voltage our output voltage up okay at no cost no cost to us because all the force in these machines are between partnered output coil 1 and partnered output coil 2 our input coil sees no negative force okay our input coil is assisted by the opposite partnered output coil so if we were to go force for force um, then you could quite easily see so let, let's say you know input coil might have um, you know let, let's say a, a total unit of one partner output coil has a total unit of one as well so one plus negative one that's zero so that's a conventional transformer that's what we see in a conventional transformer but then partnered output coil 2 kicks in that gives us a total unit of 1 okay which adds to our equation so 1 plus negative well what let's do it this way 1 plus negative 1 plus 1 equals 1 Andre Melanchenko pointed that out for us he gave us force in the uh, in the H field um, equation instead so what did he say he said h1 plus h2 plus h3 equals h3 we end up with more force in the system Floyd Sweet said the same thing okay so people need to stop and start thinking about what a changing magnetic field does in the proximity to a coil and then a second coil and then a third coil okay people if you let this slip by this will be gone forever and you won't get a second chance I can promise you that um, I am potentially I'm not going to be around forever be around forever so and I don't plan to um, I mean I can't be doing this forever so unless someone else very quickly steps up to the plate the opportunity here will very soon be gone and if you don't take this opportunity, then it will be too late.